Hi textile art class, it's me Mrs. Hack. Um, today I'm going to do an unboxing and tell you what's in your sewing kits, whether it is a dollar store sewing kit or whether you have something more elaborate with some extra things. So we're gonna do a little bit of each. So um, this is the little um, $1.47 sewing kit that you get from Walmart that had it, they had it on the shelf. And um, so let's uh, open it for the first time. It is taped shut, so I'm gonna use my scissors to uh, open it up so I don't break the plastic. Um, often they don't make this kit uh, very uh, expensive. Oh, look there. I just broke it anyway. So that's all right. It'll just click back in again. Okay, so here I go. I'm going to open it up and show you what's inside. So um, this right here is called a needle threader. Okay, and it is my favorite tool. It has this little uh, funny looking uh, Roman dude here on the end. Looks like a coin. Okay. Um, they don't all look like this. They have much fancier needle threaders, but it has this very thin wire right here. So, um, and the wire um, is kind of set up like a little diamond so that it'll squish in order to get into the needle. And you're gonna learn how to thread a needle today. So that's called a needle threader. Okay, um, they give you a pair of scissors. Now, unfortunately, these scissors are terrible. Um, they're not really gonna cut any fabric, but they um, will cut like thread in an emergency so um, but they tend to break and they tend to bend and I usually end up just tossing them because uh, they don't end up um, doing much for me so but they give it to you just in case an emergency this might be an emergency sewing kit for somebody okay so um, in this particular sewing kit they give you lots of different colors of thread okay um, normally you would call thread a spool of thread Okay, and that's when it comes on that little plastic um, holder or you know, I'll show you right here. These are spools of thread in this bigger set. So each of these colors is all thread. Um, never worry about wasting thread. Thread is pretty cheap. Okay, and so you can usually buy a lot of thread for not a lot of money and it gets you a lot of sewing done. Okay, so, so we have a lot of different colors of spools of thread and you can always buy more thread in uh, local stores. Um, usually Walmart has a pretty good sewing department. Um, they usually have, they keep uh, putting stuff in here. This particular um, kit comes with three sewing needles. So you can see here there are three needles. And I'm going to show you the difference between a needle and a pin because sometimes they come with pin. Now you might think, well, what is this little sponge for? Well, this is actually their version of a pin cushion. So um, basically, you take one of these needles out. Okay. And instead of trying to get it back into this paper, which is near impossible, you don't want to stick it someplace where you might like, uh, you know, step on it later. So if it's in this little pin cushion, this little squishy thing, then um, at least you know where it is and it's not going to be on the bottom of your dad's foot and that would not make him very happy. Um, I have a fancier pin cushion here. My pin cushion has um, these uh, pins in it that we'll learn about how to use later. And then the top here is a squishy pin cushion. So um, this is where I can keep my needles and my pins, okay? So the difference between a needle and a pin is a needle has an eye. Let me see if I have a bigger eye on this one. Yeah, well, this one's got a pretty good size eye. So if you look, this one has thread still on it already. Okay, Doo -doo -doo. take that off. Well, it's actually on, there we go. If you look, oop, let's see if I can get it aimed to the camera a little better. Oh, it's not showing you very well. All right. Well, if you're looking close, oop, there we go. Pretty good, not bad. Focus is a little off, but you can kind of get the gist. If you look very closely, there's an eye on this end. An eye is just a little hole in the metal, and that's where the thread would go through. On a pin, pins sometimes have this little pearl on top of it, or it may have a little, uh, um, just a little a nail head type pin on top of it. And so therefore, um, you can't put thread through a pin. You can only put it through a sewing needle. Um, both are very useful for sewing. And this kit, although it doesn't come with pins, um, you may have some pins around and you can actually use your sewing needles as pins if you don't have any pins around. Uh, but pins are pretty inexpensive as well. Um, now this kit also comes with a thimble. Okay, a thimble goes on your finger. You can use this if you want to. I don't tend to use a, uh, a thimble, but um, if you were, let's say, getting really good at sewing and you wanted to sew when you're watching TV and sometimes you have to kind of feel on your finger how when you poke yourself. If you poke yourself one too many times, it just makes your finger sore. You probably won't poke yourself enough to bleed to death, but so I wouldn't worry about that. But uh, 
you might get a sore finger. So this pretty much protects your finger so that you can um, sew and kind of poke at your finger without poking at your finger. So that's what that's for. So you don't need to wear one on every finger finger that you have, just the one that you think um, you would poke the most. So it's called a thimble and it comes in both plastic and it comes in metal. Okay, so that's a thimble. You have needle threader, spools of thread and pins. These are your ba basics. I have an old pin cushion here too. Uh, looks like a tomato. It's falling apart a little bit, but it's been around a long time. I have some longer uh, pins in this one. Okay, so um, these are the parts of a, a basic, basic sewing kit. Um, but sometimes you'll find in other sewing kits like this one that the they give you a couple of extra things. So in this one, they're also giving you a seam ripper. A seam ripper is a great tool. It's very sharp. You can buy a seam ripper separately, so um, if it's something that you think would be useful, um, you could buy these separately. They're not too expensive, maybe like $2 or something. Um, they come a little bigger with fancy, fancier handles. This is just a little tiny one. Um, but if you look at the seam ripper, and I'm going to undo it here, okay, it, um, it has a little razor blade right here on that little U part. So you gotta be very careful because this is super duper duper sharp. But you want it to be sharp because if you have to remove your stitches on something that you were sewing and maybe you made a mistake and it's just too hard to sit there and try to find where the stitches are, this will get underneath those stitches and rip them out. Um, I thought I had something over here that was half sewn I can show you in a minute. Oops, uh oh, there goes my camera. All right, let's try that. Sorry about the wobble. Okay, so um, here's here's a, a couple stitches that I made here. And let's say this was all a mistake. What you're gonna do with the seam ripper is you stick this seam ripper under this little stitch. That's what we call when you have one little line there, the stitch. And you're going to just use that razor blade to cut it. Okay, that way I can undo more easily all the stitches that I made that I that were mistakes and take them out. The nice thing about material and sewing is that you can sew something, completely unsew it, and it's like it never existed. You can re-sew it so it's as if nothing ever happened. The holes that you see there will eventually fade away till you can barely see them at all and I can completely re-sew this. Maybe it was a little too crooked and I wanted to make it straight and so I can redo it and make as many mistakes as I want to in order to make it so, uh, you know, this is all going to work out um, the way I want it to. So um, that's the nice thing. It's almost like an instant eraser. So that is called a seam ripper. Okay, I'm gonna put that back in there. Oop, the little cap, I'll put the little cap on it too. All right, and I also have some flexible measuring tape. Now, the difference between using a flexible measuring tape and a regular ruler is that, especially when you're thinking about making, let's say, clothing for somebody, or maybe you're making a fabric bracelet for somebody, it's really hard to get a ruler to wrap around and measure how big somebody's wrist is. But with this, since it's flexible, I can lay this on my wrist, wrap it around, Okay, at the size that would be comfortable for me to wear. And then once I wrap it around here, maybe this is a bracelet size that I think would be good. And I'm looking and it looks like 22 inches. So now I know when I measure my material that I wanna make, I know I need to measure 22 inches and then eventually it'll curve around to fit around my, my wrist or your arm or a waist or um, any other um, body part so that clothing could fit. Um, otherwise, it would be really hard for somebody to wear something that, you know, the arms are too small on or you can't get your wrists in. So the flexible um, tape, um, again, comes with little some kits and you can also buy it separately if it's something that you want to, like, start making clothes and have measurements with. But again, not necessary. Some of you will get sewing kits that have this funny little round uh, needle holder here. And this needle holder is unique because to get into a needle holder like this, you actually have to dial it kind of like you're turning a doorknob. So first thing I'm gonna do is cut this little gold or silver piece. Some have silver, some have gold. And when you do that, you will notice that there is a little hole right there. 
right now there are no other little holes all the way around this so the needles are, are safely uh, in this space so if I'm going to look for a needle that I want to use I'm going to take that little hole I'm going to dial it so I'm turning this little mechanism here and then I'm going to find the little row that I want to use you can see that and I'm going to just pour the needles into my hands it's not going to hurt me because just pouring the needles aren't going to do anything. Squeezing the needles is going to hurt, but just pouring the needles into my hand are not going to hurt me at all. So now I can choose the needle that I wanted to sew with, and I can either return the needles into that little hole, into that little road, that little lane that they have there, or if that's uh, too difficult, um, I can just put my needle into a pincushion of some sort and dial this down so that now there are no little openings for any of the needles to fall out if I'm not using them. Okay, so so um, so those are just some basics of some basic supplies. Um, remember, you're going to need some material in order to sew on. You can just get some scrap material. It could be old t-shirts, old socks, um, something you can cut up, or you can even get a pack of felt um, or a felt piece or something. Um, for your practice sewing, I am going to want you to find a piece of material. It'll help for your practice sewing to use something that doesn't have a lot of designs on it right now because that way you can see your stitches. So whatever color you want is fine, um, but something that's small that you can practice stitching on for the other lessons that I'm going to have you do today. So that there is your unboxing of your dollar store or inexpensive Walmart sewing kit or something that's a little bigger and a lot more elaborate with more supplies in it. All right, happy sewing. Go watch the next video so that you can find out how to thread a needle, how to tie knots, and how to do a basic running stitch. All right, and that's all.